Welcome to Life Abridged with your host, Eric Wallier. Running. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Uh, to be completely honest, this is my second time attempting to record this podcast. So it's Tuesday night. This comes out on Wednesdays. I do it the day before. I don't know. That's just kind of how it works out. But uh, I usually do it at night after I get home from work, which is usually around 7 o'clock. So I'll get home, I'll shower, and then I'll kind of set up and get ready to record the podcast and then record it. I usually wait to eat when I get back from work until after I record the podcast. Uh, I don't know if this is really necessary, but I don't know how I would describe it. It actually just happened. When I eat, like right after, and I try to talk a lot, I get a lot of like indigestion or like I I burp a lot. Not like aggressively, but I just kind of get choked up and like have to like inhale, take a breath. So I try to avoid that because it kind of interrupts my flow of speaking. And I find it still happens, but if I wait to eat until after, it's not as bad. So I don't eat until after, which isn't that big of a deal. I'm usually not that hungry. Uh, That's important, though, because today I decided I would have a beer or two before recording the podcast just to see if it loosens me up, if it makes for a better podcast. I've never done that before. I just kind of wanted to experiment and, you know, have a couple beers. So... I did that, did everything I had to do, set up, had a couple drinks, and then I sat down to record, and man, I was out of it. I wasn't like drunk, but when I drink on an empty stomach, it just fucks me up. I mean, I don't know why that's common. I mean, that's normal. They recommend you drink on a full stomach, whoever they is. I don't know, but it is it is better. I'd rather be eight beers deep on a full stomach than two beers deep on an empty stomach because it's just different. Like, I don't know, I, I struggle to have like a coherent thought when I'm drinking and I haven't eaten because it just, it seems like it goes straight to my head. I don't know why. But that's how it is. So I did that, and I tried to record the podcast, but it was just, it was a mess. So I stopped stopped recording, uh, got some food in me, pizza bagels, healthy, and then I'm back here now, and I feel a lot better. So hopefully this goes better. Also earlier, my upstairs neighbors were playing music, which you could kind of hear in the background. So I guess it's good. I waited because it seems like they are done. So you're only going to be getting crisp audio from here on out. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about, uh, I guess, social media because I deleted Twitter and Reddit from my phone. Uh, about a month ago now, and it's been pretty positive. I do this every once in a while. I usually last about a month. At least the last couple of times I've done it, I've lasted about a month and then just reinstalled them on my phone. But this time, I mean, I think I'm going to last longer because I like how I'm feeling. I think my mental health has been improved. I don't feel as if I'm wasting so much time. And, you know, it just, it got me thinking about social media in general, you know, with having instant access to it. What does that, uh, what does that do to your mental health, stuff like that? And I guess I just started thinking like, why 
do I use social media? Specifically Twitter. And I think the main reason for me is entertainment because it can be entertaining and it's a good way to pass the time. And then the second reason is just for my ego. You know, that's when I post, I want likes. It makes me feel good, which is kind of a double-edged sword because when I don't get likes, it makes me feel bad. And maybe just like the need to belong or something like that, some deep psychological thing that draws us to social media, but that I, I don't know as much about. I do know I use it as entertainment to pass the time and to boost my ego. Uh, that's definitely a problem though, or at least it turned into a problem. Oh, another reason I guess I, you could say I use it is to keep up with like friends and family, but that seems secondary to me. I use it more to keep up with like celebrities, influencers, rather than like fucking Johnny. Like, I don't care what Johnny is doing. It's probably some boring shit. Give me what celebrities are doing. It'll probably be interesting. No, I'm kidding. But I, I don't really use Twitter to keep up with like friends and family. It's more like the other two things I said. Which isn't inherently bad, I don't think. I think it it can easily become bad or negative, which it does for me. Like there is the positive aspects but I focus so much more on the negative ones. And uh, that's that I like the attention. It kind of gives me like self-worth when I post something and people like it. But like I said, like the other side of that, it can be like tracing, chasing the dragon, like they say. Like you'll never get enough. That's not actually fulfilling, which is probably true, but... Whatever, I don't know. So yeah, I guess if I had to explain why I use them, that would be why. Which is important to know when you're trying to evaluate something, try to understand the effect it has on your life. So yeah, those two things, entertainment for my ego, not so much keeping up with friends and family, which is more of like a a Facebook thing, I guess. Which I do have a Facebook account, but man... I uh, I hate it. It's just such... It's so lame. It is awful. If you're a fan of Facebook and you're listening to this, like, no, it's not that bad. I mean, maybe reconsider. I just... It's... Uh, it's tough. I have flashbacks thinking about that last time I went on. And it's like, oh my god. I guess Facebook and Twitter are kind of the same now. It really does depend on, like, who you're friends with or who you follow. But I'm assuming most people are pretty similar to mine. Like, Facebook, it's super political, super, I don't know, people talking about themselves. And then Twitter, yeah, it's the same thing with a few more memes, at least better memes. But anyway, uh, that's not the point. I think my biggest problems with it... I don't know why I don't have like one problem with it, but it's kind of like a mix of things. Uh, one is just, it's too many opinions. I like to take people's opinions and what they say seriously, or at least when they're intended to be serious, just because I don't know, I care, I'm interested. And if you take that approach, it's just, it's a lot to take on scrolling through Twitter I mean, it's just so many thoughts. Everyone has thoughts. It can just seem never-ending. And it doesn't really, like, get me too mad or anything. That's not really what I'm saying. I mean, sometimes I'll see something and I'm like, wow, that's dumb. But really, it's just, it's so many other people's thoughts that, I don't know, it just doesn't seem real. I don't know why. I don't know if that's exactly true, but it's just a lot of opinions, and it's nice to take a break from that. The other problem I have with it, the other negative effect it has on me, you could say, is 
like comparisons or FOMO. It's easy to feel like people are happier than you, they have a better life, they're better than you, which isn't huge in my experience, at least on Twitter. I mean, it definitely happens, but that's more of like an Instagram thing and stuff. So I don't know, that's never been a huge problem for me. Like it's definitely affected me and I notice it on my mental health, but it's not the main reason. Like I wanted it off my phone. I wanted to want to move away from it. So the last thing I think is it's just kind of escapism. I use it to pass the time when I don't really want to think about anything. When I'm bored, I just pop over to my phone, open up Twitter, open up Reddit, and just mindlessly scroll. And I don't think there's really much value in it, especially on Twitter. Not that there isn't any, but it's not that common. Maybe on Reddit a little bit more so, but still, both of them, it's not really what it's meant for, and it's not what you get out of it, which I think kind of means, like, it's not social media that's the huge problem. It's just what spending time on social media replaces, and that's doing more constructive things, more constructive things that bring you happiness or fulfillment. Because one thing social media definitely does not do is bring you fulfillment. Uh, I would say no matter what, no matter who you are. I mean, you might make a living off of social media. You might be popular on social media. But just that isn't going to bring joy to your life. I don't think it's not going to fulfill you. You need something else. So while I think this is okay in small doses, like using it for escapism, if it it becomes a large part of your day, I think then it becomes a problem. Like I'm not completely off Twitter. I haven't deleted my account. I still go on Reddit sometimes, but it is off my phone. So the only time I go on it is on my laptop which has cut my usage drastically. It made my usage drastically lower, like 90% less on both of them. Because, I mean, it's so easy to just be standing around, bored or something, pick up your phone and click on Twitter or whatever social media. With taking it off, it's more of a process to get to it, which just obviously means you're not going to do it as much, which I think is a huge step in the right direction. I spend a lot more time reading now, working, because when I'd be working on something, I would work for a while and then be like, my mind would be like, all right, take a quick break. Just hop on Twitter real quick. Take browse through Reddit. And I would do that. And it would be like for five minutes, maybe 10, and then I get back to work. And then maybe I do it again a half hour later, which adds up. And it really prevents you from getting, or at least prevents me from getting into like a real flow state that I want to be in. It's like whenever I come up to something hard, it's like, all right, this is too hard. I'm, I'm going to Twitter. And it just, it becomes a habit, which I wanted to break. And I still want to break because I'm not perfect, but taking them off my phone has helped. I know my my favorite days are the days where I'm so engrossed in whatever I'm doing, I forget to look at my phone all day. Uh, I mean, it, that's usually like, that's usually because... I'm working on something. What comes to mind for me is some of the YouTube videos I made. Like some of the vlogs I've made that have taken all day. Some of the videos I've made that get me outside. Trying new things that take a lot of work but take all day. Those I have really positive memories of. Because I remember just doing them 
getting everything done, throwing myself into it, being successful, sometimes unsuccessful throughout the day, but I was just 100% into it, and then I'd be done, and I'd come home, and I'd just fall asleep because it was a full day worth of work, and I accomplished something, which I'm always trying to find because I'm so willing to put in work for something if it's going to give me that feeling of fulfillment, of joy, of meaning, but it's hard to find. I mean, it. I don't know why, but it, it really is. There's only a handful of times I can think in recent memory where I've, I've felt that. And I mean, it's not just YouTube videos. Like, I, uh, I volunteer for my, my cousin's race. She has a charity, and we do a 5K. And every year during that, it's just such a great day because I, I wake up super early we get there, we set up what we have to set up and just work, work, work all day. And then it's done. We clean up, we go home, we kind of just relax for a bit. And then that's the day. Like you're just working the entire time for something you're going to get fulfillment out of. You're going to get a reward from just because you did something. And yeah, like I said, that, that seems hard to find. I almost wish we were at war with like some alien race and we needed people to go volunteer to go fight the aliens. And uh, I think I would do it because that would be meaning, right? Just dedicate your whole life to fighting aliens. It's kind of like a, a book I read called Old Man's War by uh, John Scalzi. He, it's a book about uh, humanity in the future where where we are at war with aliens and we wouldn't send like kids to battle. It would be when you turned 80, you would have the choice of just living the rest of your life like a regular human, you know, eventually dying. Or you could go volunteer for the army where they have mastered the art of reverse aging and they would send you into battle to fight the aliens and it's kind of like it talks about the books about you know which choice is better you know they each have their pros and cons and stuff i don't know it's a good book and i'm just kidding i don't actually want to fight aliens but i'm just saying like something i could throw myself fully into and just get lost in is what I'm looking for. Something with meaning, which like I can't find, at least right now. I'm in the process of looking for it, and I'm optimistic. I think I will. So yeah, if that makes sense, I guess that's my feelings towards social media. They're not very coherent. I know that. It's kind of a tricky thing. I'm definitely not saying I want to delete all social media for good because that's definitely not where I'm at but I I do want to use it a lot less and try to find only the positive aspects of it and how to get that out of it instead of the negative ones which is definitely easier said than done don't really know if that's possible and I'm not saying I would never delete it I mean who knows where we'll all end up what'll be around in 10 years. I think it's good to disconnect. I think I was spending way too much time on it with it being on my phone. And I probably still do spend, spend, and I probably still spend too much time being sedentary, not really doing much. But, you know, it's a step in the right direction, getting it off my phone. I go camping every other year. And where we go camping you don't get cell service, which is amazing. I always look forward to that. And by the end of it, I just feel so refreshed being cut off from the modern world for a week. It just, being out in nature is such a good reset. It gives you time with yourself, with friends, with people you care about. And I mean, it's something you should be doing, I think. Not necessarily camping, but at least maybe disconnecting every once in a while, 
taking some time away from your screens. I don't know. I'm not your mom. Do what you want. But yeah, I think it's it's good to spend time doing something I'm going to get value from rather than social media. Okay, good job, Eric. I hope that was coherent. I'm not really sure. These are tough thoughts, a lot going on, a lot to think about, really. It's interesting, an interesting time, social media. But anyway, that's it for this episode. I will see you guys in the next one.